Okay, brilliant. I can see a lot of people have joined now. So thanks for coming. This webinar is run by Rental Schools Councils. Um, I'm Lucy and I'll be chairing the session today. And I'll introduce uh, Rachel and Essa who've, who've come uh, from the UCAT and BMAT teams to talk to you too. Just before we get started, uh, there are a few housekeeping rules. So your video and microphone will be switched off. So neither myself or, or Essa or Rachel can see you or hear you. So you do need to place your questions in the Q&A button, which is on the bottom of your screen, uh, along the sort of right at the bottom, there's this speech bubble and it says Q&A underneath it. So if you place your questions in there, then I can see them and then, and then ask them to the panelists. And also if you do need to go to a lesson or, or somewhere else, then you, and you want to, to see the rest of the webinar, then this webinar will be recorded and it will be on the MSC YouTube channel so if you go on YouTube and type in Medical Schools Council, a lot of stuff will come up and it will be in there within the next two weeks. So what are we going over in this session? So we're going to give an overview of the UCAT and BMAT admissions tests. And Rachel and Nessa from the, U, uh, the UCAT and BMAT teams will be coming to talk to you about the format of the test, the, the structure, uh, what the tests contain. They then I will give you a sort of overview of how emissions tests are used by medical and dental schools. And finally, we'll go into a Q&A session where you can ask your questions and, and we'll provide some answers as best we can within the time that we have. So here's my panel. So we have Essa from Hamilton Dick from uh, University Clinical Aptitude Test or UCAT. We have Rachel Rudge from the Biomedical Admissions Test or BMAT. And we also have myself, uh, I actually work for the Medical and Dental Schools Councils, uh, so it's quite handy to run this webinar today. So why do we use admissions tests uh, in universities? So I suppose the goal is to select applicants with the best combination of cognitive ability, aptitudes and professional behaviours. And it's important to say that it's not just UCAT and BMAT, so they don't just look at your UCAT and BMAT school and decide, that's it, you're in. They look at your personal statement, your admissions tests, your grades at school, and also uh, your performance at interview. So there are a range of ways in which universities are looking to select their students. And we're not just looking for those with best academic ability. We're looking for well-rounded people who have all of the values, uh, skills, and uh, aptitude to be, to be a doctor, to be a great doctor or dentist. And how do they use admissions tests. So medical and dental schools might use them in a variety of different ways. So they might be using UCAT or BMAT as a threshold or cutoff score. So they might have above a certain score they'll start um, to select ap uh, applicants from. They might use the, the admissions test to decide whether or not to invite you to interview. And uh, they also might use admissions tests to inform whether an offer should be made uh, later on in the process. Then they also use them to decide between two equally ranked applicants in some cases. And all this information is on the university's websites in case you want to read it. They will explain how they individually use it in their individual school or university. I will ask um, Essa and, and Rachel to introduce themselves. So Essa, would you like to go first? Hi, um, my name's Esther. I'm the Marketing Communications um, Lead at UCAT. Um, hopefully give you a, a brief overview of, of the test and the key information you need to know this morning. Thanks Esther. Um, and Rachel would you like to introduce yourself? Hi there I'm Rachel. I um, work on student support materials for BMAT and uh, yeah same sort of thing as Esther that I will be providing um, you know an intro to uh, to the test. Thanks both. So Esther, would you like to go first? I know you have a presentation. Okay, yeah. I'll just share my screen. Okay, can everybody see that? Okay, just give me a nod, yeah, great, okay. Um, so this is only 10 minutes long. And just to say, it, it's not going to be a revision session. So if, if anybody sort of signed on expecting that, it's much too early in the year for us to be uh, running that kind of session at the moment. What this is instead is an overview of the test and the key information you need to know. Um, so you know where to go on our website to find it and, and the key points that are important really. And I can signpost you to the right places. 
So Lucy's covered some of this already, which is really useful. So like the BMAT, the UCAT is an admissions test. looking at different things uh, to your academic qualifications. So it's looked looking at the skills and attributes that our universities uh, believe are important in becoming future doctors and dentists. So there is no curriculum content as such. Um, and in that way, it does differ to the BMAT. So that's important to understand. It's helping universities make more informed choices about the kind of applicants they, they want that they believe will go on to be successful on the course and in their clinical career. So you would sit the test this summer um, and then apply to UCAS in October. So you sit the test in, before you apply to UCAS. You can only test once each year. So um, it is very important and we, we understand that it, you know, it's a big pressure for candidates. So it's important to be prepared and um, take it seriously and allow enough time to, to prepare for the test. It's a two hour co multiple choice computer-based test. So you sit the test at one of our Pearson View test centers. Sort of lay out our stall for this year as, as I think this will probably be one of the questions that will be popping up on the Q&A, although I can't see that at the moment. But um, Last year, um, when we were in the, um, the, the height of the COVID pandemic, although it feels like we're still at the height of it, we were looking at options of how to run the test still successfully because our universities were very keen that, especially in the current climate of uh, what's happening in education, that we still run the test. It's an important factor in their decision making. So last year we ran the test in a combination of test centres and online using a tool called OnView Online at Home. And it's the first time we've done that and the test is not designed for use at home really, it's originally designed for use in test centres and we firmly believe that is the best environment that the test should be sat in. So our plan this year is to deliver across our test centres. Confident that by the time the testing opens in July we will be able to do that. We will obviously have contingency plans in place if we can't do that, but currently the plan is to, to run the tests in our test centres. Okay. So test assesses mental abilities across five separately timed subtests, and I'll, I'll mention those in a second. So um, if we look at do you need to sit the UCAT or do you need to sit the BMAT, obviously that comes down to which universities you're planning to apply to. Depending on your choices, you may end up sitting both admissions tests. Really, you can cope with that. So it all depends on which university you want to apply to. So these are the 30 universities that require the UCAT as mandatory. Um, don't worry about jotting these down. This list is on the website. It's just there for information. Key dates to be aware of, just so you can get a feel for the test cycle. And again, these are on our website. We open registration at the start of June, and at this point you go online and you create an account. So you would create UCAT web accounts. That means you get a unique candidate number, and we know who you are, and we've got your details and we can communicate with you. And at that point, you can go ahead and apply for some important things, which I'll touch on in a second, which is the bursaries and the access arrangements. And then at the end of June, uh, booking open. So at that point, you can start looking at when is there a convenient test day, and where is my nearest test centre, and you can decide when you want to sit your test, get it booked. And then you, you've got your cycle of when you need to prepare, really. Um, so testing starts at the end of July and runs through to late September. So you've got two months to sit the test. So you've got a variety of dates you can choose when is best for you, fit it around your studies and other things you've got going on. Okay. So the last testing date is the end of September and that's ahead of the CAS deadline. So one of the things I wanted to mention is um, the fees. So the standard fee for this year is £75 if you're in the UK, but if you're eligible, you can get a bursary to cover the full test fee. So you, it's a really simple online application and we would suggest you do that after you've registered and created a web account and then it's done and out of the way before you need to book your test. That means you won't actually have to pay for your test. You get a voucher code, which you can use to pay for your test. 
The full eligibility criteria is on our website. So there's lots of things that qualify you for a bursary. So go and have a look at, at things like, like that. So it's not just things like preschool meals. It's got quite a wide criteria. So have a look if you, if you, you meet it. I'd also pop a note in there that um, there are some of our universities that have um, contextual offers where you can uh, apply and uh, obtain a place on the course with slightly lower grades than other students. And one of the flags they use for seeing if you're eligible for a contextual offer is whether you've applied for UCAP bursary. So even if you're thinking, oh, it's 75 quid, it's not that much money, I'll just get my mum to pay it or whatever. It, it's important to apply for that if you are eligible because it's you an important flag later on in the process. And the other thing to mention is once you've got your web account, have a think about if you need access arrangements and apply for these plenty of time in advance. So this might be if you get extra time in public exams at schools, get rest breaks, or you've got any other additional needs that mean you might need some adjustments in the test. We've got a number of different variations and we can usually accommodate most people's requirements, but it's important that you let us know about those and apply for those in plenty of time so we can get all that approval done before you need to book your test. Test formats, there's the five subtests. Again, I'm not going to go into these in great detail. All the information is available on the website about the different subtests. They're separately timed. So being quicker on one subtest is not giving you more time on the next one. It's really important to have a look at those and understand that. And it is a very speeded test. That's one of the, the factors that, that a lot of candidates find quite challenging is managing your time. How should you prepare is the main thing I know you'll be worrying about. So we say at least 25 to 30 hours, but I think most candidates or the high score candidates probably spend more than that. So at least I would say six weeks before your test, you need to be doing your revision. There are loads of free resources on the UCAT website. So we provide you with a preparation plan with how you should use them and a time scale. There's Tutorials for the functionality of the test, tutorials for the question styles, different strategies. There's a huge bank of free practice questions and there's four fully timed practice tests. So it's really important to use those official resources. Rachel will probably say the same about BMAT. You know, there's loads of commercial companies out there offering coaching in, in both of our tests. Some of them may be very good, some of them may not. We basically have no control over, over the materials they produce, and there are simply too many of them around for us to keep track of. What we would say is that you shouldn't need to use them to be able to perform well on the test. We aim to provide as, as enough free practice materials for you to be able to practice for the test from our website. So how you prepare is up to you, but, but that's our official stance because we have no, no, no clue on their scoring and marking and whether it reflects how we mark the test. So it might be quite misleading if you are going off scores you're getting from a commercial provider. Okay, all this information is on the website. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit now because I think I'm nearly at my 10 minutes. So uh, yeah, basically visit the UCAT website and have a look at all the free materials. What I would say is that we are still quite early in our test cycle. So we only finished testing October last year so we're still planning for this year's test cycle so at the moment the website is updated with the fees and the dates and the basic information but we are still working on updating a lot of our website and our materials fresh for this year so things will be changing over the next few months if you're going on the website. And a few tips just to throw in there so again all this is on the website um, brushing up on your maths there's some tips about reading the uh, good medical practice guidelines if you're struggling with SJT, getting used to the functionality of the test. There's lots of things that can help you, you know, becoming familiar with the calculator. There's a flag and review tool in the test where you can, if you're struggling with questions, you can mark them, come back to them at the end if you have time. So becoming familiar with that can save you valuable time and can really improve your score. And again, there's no negative marking on the test. So what we would say to all candidates, you know, it is multiple choice. Don't leave blanks. You're just throwing away marks if you do that. So, so be smart about how you work your way through the test. And all those tools are on our practice test so you can practice them. 
scoring and results, come out with a, a score for the cognitive subtests and a banding for the situational judgment. So you get two parts of your, your score reports. And again, as Lucy's already said, the universities use these in very different ways. And it's important to be aware of that. So don't despair if you don't get a score that you don't think is very good or, or, or whatever. You know, it, it may close one door with one university, but a lot more may still be open for to you. So it may mean you have to rethink where you are applying to. If, say you've got a band four in the SJT and one of the universities look at those candidates, or if you're not meeting a certain threshold, you just might have to be change your choices, be more, more selective depending on your score. So have a look at that information on entry requirements on each of their websites because it's really important. And then we pass your scores directly to your chosen universities. You don't need to put it on your UCAS application, although I think they, they sometimes tell you do, but you, you can put it on there if you want. But obviously candidates could put anything. So the universities use the scores that we send through. And that's it. Um, follow us on social media and there's loads more information on the website and I'll stick around for some Q&A's at the end. So, so that was brilliant. Um, <laughs> uh, that was a really good uh, introduction to UCAT and, and all that uh, that contains. Uh, Rachel, would you have a presentation that you want to Sure, share? let me share my screen. There we go. Can you see that okay? Yep, I can see yeah. it. Great, thanks. Hi, everybody. Um, this is just a quick introduction to BMAT. And as you'll see, there is some common ground with um, some of the points that, uh, that Esther was just talking about for UCAT. So I'm just going to quickly run very quickly through uh, what's in the test, a little bit on uh, preparation and a few FAQs, but obviously we'll have more of those um, later as well. So well, why do universities use BMAT? So certain universities use BMAT for their medical, biomedical and dentistry courses. And this gives them one common piece of information about everybody that enables them to compare everybody fairly. And it also helps them identify whether you have the skills to succeed on uh, your chosen course there. As Lucy said, it is just one part of the application process. So they are just they are looking at, at different aspects of the, you know, the whole you uh, and the test is just one part of it. And uh, as I think we've already discussed that the, the universities have information on their websites about they how they use their results of admissions tests and fit them into their processes. So um, we set the test and uh, send them the results um, and then how they use the results sits very much with them. So these are the UK universities and courses requiring BMAT. These will be on uh, these are on our website. Um, the test is used internationally by other universities, um, but these are the ones for the UK. So BMAT is a two hour test in three sections that you sit one after the other. So the first part is thinking skills. So this is testing problem solving and critical thinking. And there are 32 questions in 60 minutes. Yeah, BMAT is designed to be a challenging test because it's differentiating between, you know, the most able uh, people. Um, so you do have to get through the questions fairly quickly, uh, as, uh, as Esther was saying with UCAT as well. Section two is testing your scientific knowledge and your ability to apply your knowledge of biology, chemistry, physics and maths. And there are 27 questions in 30 minutes. And the third part is a short writing task where you answer one essay question, you have 30 minutes, and that is an exercise in written communication skills. So I'm just going to show you a sample if uh, I don't know whether anybody's familiar or looked at any questions at all. But this is a problem solving type question from the thinking skills. So this is testing numerical and spatial skills. You cannot use a calculator for, for any part of BMAT. But if you look at this question, we're talking about um, 12p each for oranges, buying eight, eight, 10, 12, 18, 20. So quite often with BMAT, it's not a matter of solving complicated equations, but it's can you, do you have the thinking skills to work out the process to reach the right answer? This is a critical thinking type question. So in these questions, you're presented with a paragraph of text, which is putting forward an argument. And it will ask you to either um, 
uh, identify a conclusion or identify an assumption or a flaw, it will tell you what it's looking for. And then you pick from uh, the five uh, multiple choice options, which one you think um, is the answer to the question. You don't need any prior knowledge of any subject area for this. I mean, this question is about peat and wetlands and gardeners. You don't need to know anything about any particular subject. The question will contain all of the information that you need. So for section two, this is testing biology, chemistry, physics and maths level of the scientific knowledge um, on our website because we operate internationally we say um, up to the age of 16 but in the UK that would be GCSE level science and it's testing it's not testing factual recall it's assuming as you will take forward with you um, towards medical school as you know this that you have a certain level of knowledge but it's can you apply that knowledge to new problems um, and then, yes, there are 27 questions uh, on those different subjects in that section. The writing task is it's a short essay. There are three questions and you choose one to answer. So one will be on a general theme, one will be on a scientific theme and one will be on a medical theme. But you can choose any one you like. You don't have to choose the medical question because you're applying for medicine. It's whichever question you think, oh, I've got something to say about this on the day. And the question will typically follow this type of format where there is um, a quotation or a statement. Uh, so this one was um, one of the, the medical theme questions. As you can see, it's quite wide and you can take this in a variety of directions uh, and it will tell you what you need to do. So you need to address all of the parts of the question, the one question that you've chosen. So what do you think is meant by the statement? Argue to the contrary and to what extent do you agree? blah, 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 whatever is in the question. You need to follow those three parts and answer each of them to be in the running for the full marks. It is marked on the basis of the quality of the content that you've written, as well as the quality of the English used. So the test date for November is the 3rd of November. And I think this may come up in the questions. In other years, we have offered an alternative session. You can only take it once per year. But last year, because of COVID, we weren't able to offer a second uh, optional date. We only offered one date. And for this year, um, we are also quite early in our, our cycle. Um, so the decision is being made. So please do keep an eye on the BMAT website for all of the latest information about BMAT. Just a few tips um, to help you get started with your preparation. So at the bottom of the screen, and don't worry, this is really easy to find. If you just, if you just Google BMAT preparation, you'll be sent in the right direction. But that is the URL for all the preparation materials. Um, we've got a, a short animation that's just a quick, sort of friendly, nice intro to the test, covers the different sections, gives tips on um, how to sort of start your preparation off. On the right of the screen is um, a PDF. Uh, it is the BMAT preparation guide. This is just a short guide that uh, gives a summary of what is in each section of the test and gives a guide to our different resources, how to use them and where you can find them. The BMAT test specification here provides a really good overview of the three different sections of the test. And it also um, has a full list of the subject areas of uh, science and maths that the questions can draw from. So this is a really helpful guide, particularly for section two. On the right is our online section two um, revision guide. So this is those same subject areas, but expanded. So you can use this for revision if you need to. You can use your textbooks, you can use other resources on the internet and so on, but it's there for free. You can go on anytime you want to access it as much as you want to. And this should be helpful. So this is BMAT specific. So it's covering those topics. So that's why that's quite a helpful resource because they're all in that one location. The most helpful and the most used resource that we have is our practice papers and past papers. So we have some practice papers with worked answers. And then we have past papers going back many, many, many years. So you can use those to dip into, use as much as you like. You, you know, as soon as you're ready to take a look and just sort of if your curiosity is peaked, you know, go and have a look, see what the questions are about. And then if you are going to take BMAT, um, these are really, really helpful to practice. Then you can identify any gaps in your uh, skills or knowledge and so on. And it's also really helpful to do these under time conditions because um, 
the time management is a really important factor. So um, in the run up to the test, doing these under time conditions is really important. I would just reiterate what Esther has just said about all of those preparation courses. Um, you know, there are a lot out there. We don't endorse them. We're not involved with those people. Um, you know, we hope that everybody can find everything they need on our website because there is a lot of uh, information and resources that are there for you to use for free. We have a few uh, FAQs that sometimes pop up. I'll just very quickly uh, cover these ones and then we can move on to uh, more general ones. But sometimes people worry if they're not taking physics A level. Well, the level of the physics, as I've mentioned, is GCSE. So, uh, you know, you can use the, uh, the specification to see what all of those different subject areas are, not just physics, uh, biology, chemistry um, and maths as well use that as a sort of checklist you can use that section two guide that I just showed you the free guide um, to revise the topics um, to the, the questions can come from. Some students worry because this is an essay it is a very short essay it is asking you to use skills that you've gained from from your school work so far really so skills that you would have used in uh, say GCSE English and you, that you might still be using in other report writing that you're doing. So as well as the practice papers that I've mentioned, we've got some sample essays that were written by students and have been marked. We've also got the marking criteria on our website that the, um, the examiners follow when they're marking um, those writing tasks. And there's other guidance on the website, tips and some videos from examiners giving their sort of, you know, ideas on uh, how to approach that section. Access arrangements are available if you have access arrangements for your school exams. The information about that is on our website um, and what you need to do is there too. In terms of the test, if you can't afford it, don't think we've quite set the fee yet. I think it'll be around £60 in the UK. But, you know, it's important to the universities uh, and to us that um, that BMAT can be taken by anybody who wishes to take it. So um, the, the the financial criteria and information about how you go about um, getting the reimbursement of the fees is on our website. So please don't panic about these tests. They are, you know, testing you on uh, skills and knowledge that you've got. Uh, you know, you're already thinking about it early. You're here today. You've already learned quite a bit about, um, you know, what you need to do. Knowing what's in the test will really, really help you. You know, the sooner that you sort of know what it's about and start thinking, you know, that's going to be really helpful to you. Practicing is really, really important, particularly under time conditions. And we always say just use these, you know, this is an opportunity to to show the universities what, what you know and what you can do. So it's a great opportunity to show your potential. So, uh, yeah, just go for it. Thanks, Rachel. That was a really great introduction to BMAP. Um, OK, so I'm going to go into the Q&A and I see we've got quite a few questions in there. Uh, there are lots of questions about studying so or revising. So students are asking, when should you start revising? Do you have a particular time in the year when you recommend that they should start looking at that for either BMAT or UCAT? Do you want to go first, Rachel? Yeah, yeah, go for Esther, yeah. <laughs> um, so you can, as, as you said, we recommend at least six weeks before, really. So it depends when you're booking your test for. One thing I didn't mention is we do, although we've got a two month test cycle, we recommend that you see your test as early as possible. If you leave it to the end of September, things are getting manic again. You're going to be back at school or college, have other things going on. And there's a high volume of students trying to test then. So if you do need to reschedule or move anything, it's harder to find test slots. So I would say sit earlier and then just work back at least six weeks before your test test. Thanks, Esther. And, and, and Rachel at, at BMAT? We don't really tend to sort of have such a, a kind of prescribed approach to it, really, because we just find that from, you know, getting information about when people prepare, people really vary about their approach. And if they're taking both tests, uh, you know, how they fit that in. Um, and in the old days, uh, if they were going on holiday, <laughs> I mean, hopefully that'll happen this year, but it's sort of fitting it all in. So really, we would say sort of be guided you know, have a look 
soon I mean it's very soon it's winter it's still you know but you know when you're ready to start thinking about it have a look have a little try at some questions and see where where you have gaps and what you might need to do and I it's it really is about kind of developing your own strategy and sort of developing your own time scale and I think people you know once they start looking at the papers and getting a feel for for how they how they've done when they do a practice and they can they can mark them and see how they've done then they can develop you know their own sort of personal plan of you know how to approach it thanks rachel yeah and i think that's important to say that this is a kind of exploratory time for year 12s isn't it they need to look at where they want to apply to next year as well and that will inform their, their choice of what test they need to take so start looking at universities and thinking about where you might want to apply next year too we also have a question here again about um revising and the student is asking, are there any books that you would recommend that are, are worth getting? What would you, do you have any books that you recommend or would you just say, go to the, the website and use the practice papers? Esther? Um, I, I, would, I would say go to the website. I mean, our advice on this has changed over the last couple of years, really. Books used to be really popular so we would say you know you use the official practice materials first if you've run out of all the questions and all the free questions you can find online um, from the practice test then yeah maybe use a book as an extra resource for some extra practice questions but I think really they're not as useful now D sitting and looking at a book and writing the answer on paper is very different to doing it on screen in the same format you would be taking the UCAT in a live environment so I think it's really important to practice in the same method as you are going to be seeing the live test and I don't think a book really really gives you gives you that. I think as well you did say that you have a thousand questions so that's quite a few to get through. Um, yeah th yeah that's so just a yeah. question bank so the tests are on top of that so there's a lot to go at with the free official materials before you start considering any other anything else. Thanks Esther. R Rachel uh, is there any view on that from from Dina on, on books? Yeah, I mean, we'd, we'd say the same from BMAT, really, that we've got past papers going back a really long way. So there are a lot of questions. Um, I mean, I would say that the format of the test over those years, because it's been going for such a long time, has changed slightly. But the, the sort of the latest papers and specimen papers will, you know, well, you'll see when you go onto the website, um, you know, kind of that. I mean, nearly everything is, uh, is still applicable. But we would, yeah, we would say use the free materials first of all rather than going to to books and there, there are so many out there we we're, we're not um we do have a book that we produced a while ago but we produced it before we had so many free resources so we've kind of really you know we really just want people to be able to to prepare without having to pay anything but it is i mean it is a personal choice but i would say start with the website and and you know take it from there thanks rachel so go to the website, uh, don't go to books first, go to the website. Go to the websites first, yeah, yeah. The free materials first. There's yeah. so much out there and as, as, as both of them have outlined, so um, you won't be stuck for questions to, to, to try out. Okay, so there, there are a few questions in here, which are, a, a few students are a bit worried about abstract reasoning and how they can get better at abstract reasoning. It's quite a difficult one. Do you have any advice on how they can how they can do that yeah I, I mean it is it is a difficult sub test and I think it, it throws a lot of students because it is so unfamiliar to anything you might have done before at school you know the quantitative reasoning you you're using a lot of your GCSE math school skills and verbal reasoning picking out information they feel quite familiar whereas the abstract doesn't I would say repetition is a big thing um so the more questions you do the more it, it does sound off, but they, that is the best way to get better at it. Um, we've got a tutorial online at the moment, which will be updated again. We're, we're sort of padding that out a bit for, for this year. But that goes through all the different question types in there and tells you sort of um, patterns to look out for. So things like, without getting bogged down in the test, like shapes and size and things. It runs through some of the common patterns and helps you get better at trying to spot those and identify them. And I think I've just answered a question in the, in the Q&A chat, but it's one of those things where I would say go on YouTube, and I don't often say that, but go on YouTube. Um, there's loads of really good tutorials from candidates who back the test who go into a huge amount of detail of how they tackled abstract reasoning and work through lots of questions and 
we have to be quite careful with with our role you know we are the test provider we are not the coaching providers so we'll we'll give you tutorials we'll give you strategies and tell you the question types but but our aim is not to sort of help you train you to get better at the test you kind of need to practice and revise on your own but have a look at you know hear information there's some great great videos on, on youtube about abstract reasoning strategies and tutorials Thanks, Esther. Um, Rachel, would you say the same for abstract reasoning? Well, for us, I suppose, well, there's a question at the side there, uh, critical thinking. Yes, I mean, I would absolutely, uh, you know, echo what Esther just said about as test providers, we want people to learn, you know, not shortcuts, but thinking behind <laughs> how you go about doing these things, because it's actually showing skills. And it really is a matter of practicing. Um, I mean, for, for, for us, for our section one, which I suppose kind of is the sort of comparable area, we do have a guide to the different question types. And, uh, you know, this, this, you know, reading that will help students kind of see the difference between the questions. When you're actually sitting the questions and doing them, it doesn't matter, you know, what category it falls under. But if you kind of find there's a particular type that I find pretty difficult myself and I know when I come across them what they are because I struggle and I think ah, I need to get better at this type it's about getting your own strategy together I think it just applies for, for every part it applies for every part of life I suppose but uh, for a test that you know if there are gaps you know keep practicing keep practicing the things you know if, if you're short on time I mean not that people are at the moment but um, you know keep practicing the things that you that you struggle with and you know sort of try and get better look at worked answers and and so on because there are sort of lots of materials there to practice with thanks rachel brilliant answer uh, i think that this, this has come up a few times just practice 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 it, it really does help okay so i'm looking in here and there's a student who's asking can you reset the test in the same year so can you only take it once uh, per year or can you sit it multiple times uh, Esther, for you can just one, once per year. I'm afraid it is, it is one shot. Yeah, if you're unsuccessful in your application to medical school, you can sit the test again next year for next next year's application cycle, but no, only once. Brilliant, thanks, Esther and and Rachel for BMAT. Yes, we're the same. So last year actually we only offered one session, and as I mentioned for this year. Uh, because we're sort of still quite early decisions being taken uh, but yes you can only sit it once um, so if you wanted to apply again then you would need to take the test again and they would not know what your previous score was it's kind of clean slate kind of thing yeah thanks Rachel there, there are questions about what is a good score uh, or is there a pass and fail element to UCAT or BMAT um, I think it's quite difficult to answer because medical schools and dental schools vary in what they might consider a good score. So there might be a bit of variation and what, you know, this, the scores that they're looking for might vary between them. But um, Esther, did you have any thoughts on a good yeah. score for you, Kat? I, th I think what you said is ab absolutely right. Um, it does vary and um, we put statistics on the website. So for the UCAT, you can look at what the average test score is and you know roughly where you sit them in terms of uh, deciles or percentiles. So you can get a feel for where you are compared to other candidates, which is important. Yes, yeah, some of the university thresholds, ones that have thresholds, they will shift slightly depending on the performance of the candidate population that year. So if they say we don't take any concerns, for example, that may shift slightly each year depending on, on, on scores. So, um, yeah, look, look at the entry requirements of your website. Thanks, Esther. And just to confirm, there's no pass or fail element to... No, no there's not, no. Thanks, Esther. And, and Rachel, uh, did you have any thoughts for BMAP? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, the same, really, that, uh, it, you know, it's these things are decided, uh, you know, as how the, the group, the cohort performs in that year. You can see on our website how um, each year group did perform, you know, with their with their sort of grades for for each uh, section and session. So actually, you can see you can you can take a paper market and then you can see how you would have performed sort of within that group. But you know, you've just got to aim to do absolutely as well as you can. <laughs> That's you know the sort of best thing that you can do. 
Thanks, Rachel. Um, just on that point of scores, do universities get the scores per section uh, for each test or do they just get the sort of an overall score? Rachel? Um, sorry, go on, Rachel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> for BMAT, they get um, a, a mark for section one, section two and section three, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, Esther? Yes, same, same for the UCAT. Um, most of them use the score as a whole of the four cognitive subtests, but some do look uh, put thresholds for the individual subtests as well. Thank you. The, the, there are a few questions in here about calculators, so uh, I think I can combine those into one. Uh, they're asking, can you use a calculator? A possibility on the UCAT, Esther? Uh, yes, the, there is an on-screen calculator only, so you can't take your own calculator to the test centre. Um, it is on screen. You can get used to the functionality of this within the question banks or the practice test. So make sure you practice that, how to call it, how to, how to dismiss it, uh, and you can get used to it. It's not a scientific calculator. You don't need that to, to do the UCAT. So um, yeah, it's important to be familiar with, with that. You all, I saw a question as well, and Rachel probably um, can answer this for that, but you also get um, a whiteboard and marker pen for use in the UCAT, so you can make notes if you need to during the decision making or quantitative reasoning. So you, you can note take, but within certain constraints um, that we provide. Fantastic, thanks, Esther. Um, is a calculator used in in BMAT, Rachel? No, no calculator, but yes, you can write down your your workings out. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, Okay, so uh, for BMAT again, there, there's a question here. It's asking, is there only one essay in BMAT to answer? I know you mentioned there were three choices, but there is only one essay to do at the yeah, end. Yeah, you just you just don't you just do one essay. Uh, but there are there there is a choice between three questions. So the idea is that it's you know if you if you see something, you've got some ideas of how to put forward a good argument or something kind of really good to say. As I said, it doesn't have to be the medical. The medical thing is it's it's wide. I mean, the subjects are wide because people would approach all these things in very different ways. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's kind of it's coming from you. It's how you communicate your ideas, how you back up your arguments. So yes, you choose the one, the one only that you that you want to answer. But then you answer the three sort of subparts of the question. Thanks, Rachel. There is a question here. I know you mentioned that there are, at least for UCAT, there are multiple dates when you can sit the UCAT. And for BMAT, you're still sort of deciding on, on when those dates will be as well. So you're not entirely sure at the moment. There's a candidate who's asking, are the questions the same for everyone? What if a, a friend told you the questions beforehand? Uh, do you change your questions in different test sittings? Um, yeah, so for, for the UCAT, um, see that's, that comes down to test security. So we. It's delivered online in the test centre. The way the UCAT questions are, you'll see when you start to revise it, it, it's very difficult to sort of relay test content. It's so time pressured when you're in there to actually have time to be answering your own questions and trying to remember them to tell a friend. Um, and you wouldn't um, know whether the answers you provided were correct anyway in, in order to tell a friend. But we do have different formats of the test as well. So there is some randomised uh, formats in test delivery so you may not see the exact same questions that somebody sat at the next session you can will see that there are slightly varied formats in in the order and the um the questions that are delivered thanks esther uh rachel uh how do you also have sort of randomization in bmat usually or um, well, so we do have the date for November. It's the 3rd of November. Um, everybody sits it at the same time. Um, so there's no, there's no issue because everybody will just sit it on that date. Yes, we're not sure about the alternative session because we couldn't offer it last year and, and the decisions being made for this year. But that was it when, the, when we did run that alternative session, it was completely different questions. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> There, there are actually a few BMAT specific questions in here. Someone's asking, does BMAT have any negative mark, marking? 
No, no. I mean, unfortunately, I'm sure I still say the same. Running through all, the, all you, a, a quick introduction to the test, you can't cover all. Actually, Esther covered it, but I didn't cover it. There's no negative marking, so don't leave any blanks. If you have to make a guess, make a guess because you won't you won't lose out. And it's some people think, no, I don't want to risk making a guess. But yes, if you have to make a guess, then do. And then multiple choice as well, so you can usually rule some things out. It's definitely not that one. It's definitely not that one. And and then make a guess. Um, Yes, no negative marking. Thanks, Rachel. I think uh, Esther covered that in her session, so no need to go over that again. Someone's asking where will the tests take place this year? So clearly last year there was a bit of differentiation because of the pandemic, and it's quite difficult for you to say at this point what will happen in six months' time because things are changing every two minutes. Do you have any ideas of, of your contingency plans for this year? at this moment. So Esther? Um, yeah, I, I only touched on it brief, briefly in the presentation, but yes, so our plan is to offer it at test centre. Again, that is our first choice scenario and that's the one we're working to at the moment. Although I should say it's very, very difficult to plan. And saying, you know, we're confident all our test centres will be open and we'll be able to deliver it in July. Doesn't sound very convincing at the moment when we're still in national lockdown, but um, just sort of looking ahead to the the end of July when testing starts, it's still quite a few months away. Um, vaccine rollout hope, appears to be going well. Our, our, our plan A is that we will deliver it in test centres. And we delivered over 60% of the um, tested centres last year anyway, so that was successful. We do have contingency plans for online testing, but at the moment they are only contingency plans. That's not something that will be offered to, to all candidates. If, if it was used, we would see that maybe being um, maybe for international candidates who, who don't have access to test centres. Thanks, Esther. And I think in, in for BMAT, is it run in their school's centre, Rachel? Yes. So last year we um, went online with BMAT, um, but running through test centres, we did offer remote proctoring for candidates that needed to isolate for COVID and all for sort of various reasons. As for this year, as you say, it's very it's it's very difficult to sort of say what will what will go ahead. Um, but we'd be hoping to do to do similar to last year. But I mean, for for all tests and for for the whole application process generally, I think it's really important that people keep an eye on what's going on um, on websites, obviously. So. Thanks, Rachel. In, in relation to the essay questions, there's someone who's asking, do you have to type the essay on the computer or can you write it down on paper? Rachel? Yes. So we went online um, last year and then yes, it is typed. We're hoping to do the same this year, but um, as I say, it's, it's very sort of early in our processes and uh, we, you know, we will be up, updating the website uh, accordingly when we sort of know for sure what's what's been going on. But yes, yeah, so so yes, for the for the last session, people uh, did type their essays. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, so I'm looking in in the Q and A. There's a question here about UCAT asking if it's all multiple choice. It is. That's the short answer. Yes, it, yes, it is. Um, some answers have more than one correct answer. So you might have to drag and drop certain answers. So there could be more than one correct answer. But yeah, it, it is all multiple choice. Okay, fantastic. Um, there's a question up here about bursaries. So uh, someone is asking whether the bursary just covers the test cost or it covers uh, travel costs to the test center, for example. Uh, does it just co to cover the test cost? For you, uh, it does, yeah. yeah. And for BMAT? Yes, yes, it would be the same. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Rachel. I, I would say, though, um, that if that is a problem, then perhaps speak to your school or to because they might be able to help in some way. Uh, so if that is a, a, a real issue, then, then do ask your school because your school is always willing to help you and help young people with, with um, access arrangements and, and any problems that they might have in sitting these tests. Most for, for, for BMAT, um, which sort of runs in a, a slightly different way to UCAT, most UK students do take the test in their school. 
because their school is a test centre. I mean, there's yeah. all the information about registration on the website that, uh, again, will will be updated. But um, yeah, most most students do take it at their at their school or college that that registered them, and then they take it. But and there's information about where you take the test on the website. But. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Rachel. Um, yeah, so if you are sitting BMAT, then it will probably be in your school anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. There's a question here about whether you should take BMAT or UCAT this year if you're planning to take a gap year. Uh, so my answer to that would be no, because you're not, you're sitting it in the year that you are applying to medical school. So if you're not applying to medical school this year, then for next year, then you don't need to use it, the, the UK or BMAT test. Is that correct, Esther and, and, and Rachel? Yes, if, if you've um, applied for deferred entry, you would still sit it, but yeah, you, you sit it in the year that you apply. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you both. Um, so there's a question here asking, when do you get your results? Do universities get the score before we do? For you, Kat, uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Esther? Um, yes, uh, so a short answer is uh, immediately. So you get them when you leave the test centre. So within a couple of minutes of finishing your test, you will know straight away how you've done. Your score is also visible on your web account within, within 24 hours. Um, so you will have your score before your universities do, and you can use that to make your decisions about where you want to apply. And, and that is important that you use your score smartly. Yeah, and then we send the uh, scores to universities uh, within the first week of November, so shortly after the UCAS deadline. Thanks, Esther. I think that's a bit different for BMAT, isn't it, Rachel? Because if you're sitting it in November, then yeah. you've already applied. So Exactly. So if you're sitting it in November, you've already applied and you get your results about three weeks later um, and the universities automatically receive them for that November test session and they will know just slightly, I think the day before students do, yeah, for the November session, yeah. Thanks, Rachel. On that point, when do you publish your average, I know you publish sort of the statistics on how all of the candidates do so that students can see sort of the average for that cohort. When do you publish that? Uh, one of the students is asking normally. For you, Kat, it, it's usually um, within about five days of testing end. So usually about the first week of October, we, we would publish that. We usually in a normal year uh, publish interim stats as well partway through when we've had enough candidates test to see where, where the mean is going. So you can see fairly early, you know, where you sit. Thanks, Esther. Uh, do you do the same for BMAT, Rachel? Uh, yeah, so the a statement of results will go up onto our website on the day that the results are released to candidates so students can see um, where they sat within that group. Thanks, I, I think that's important, um, but it's also, you shouldn't place too much importance on that because you're, at the end of the day, you're looking at each university and what they're requiring for their UCAT or BMAT. So there may be universities which are requiring a higher score and there may be some which have a lower threshold as well. So it really depends on where you apply and you need to look carefully at, at those options and, and look at your test score and then see where it is appropriate for you to apply because you don't want to apply somewhere that you're definitely not going to get, get selected because you don't have a high enough score. Okay, so looking back into the Q&A, there is someone here who's asking, how will you know if your score is too low? I think we've more or less covered that, but if anyone wants to add anything. No? Just looking at the university entry requirements at the different thresholds, mm -hmm. yeah. do some research. There's also someone asking if you can have scrap paper for workings out. Is this the possibility at either UCAT or BMAT? Um, so for you, for you, Kat, you're allowed a, a whiteboard and marker pen. It's not actually paper and pen, but th there are note-taking facilities and they are provided at the test centre. Thanks, Esther. Uh, for BMAT, Rachel is scrap. Uh, yes. So when it was paper-based, you could write on the question paper um, uh, back in the day. But um, when it went online last year, uh, yes, students were allowed rough, rough paper and pen to make notes and so on. Thanks. Um, 
that now there's someone here who's asking if you reapply to medicine do you have to take UCAT or BMAT again the answer is yes yeah yeah because these these go alongside your your application it's I mean as we've sort of said from the from the beginning it's kind of part of the picture um so yes you 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 would do the test again yeah it, it's a fresh application and what you got one year might not reflect your sort of ability the next year so it it does need to be taken again so yes that, that that's what you would do if you're going to reapply there is someone who's asking if they need to let their school or college know that they are applying uh, to either medicine or dentistry presumably so uh, do they need to let the school know rachel Yes, for BMAT, um, you need to be registered by a test centre. So for UK students, usually that is their school or college that will register them and then they will sit the test there. If for any reason you can't take it at school or college, um, we do have a network of centres, um, but they usually charge an admin fee for having an invigilator and, and so on. So we do always advise people to go to their school in the first instance. And as soon as you know that you want to take BMAT, um, you should speak to the school and, and say, you know, this is this is what I want to do. And they need to register you um, as well. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, uh, Esther, is that the same for UCAT? Do they need- No, no I mean, it, you know, it's good to tell your, your school if you're applying to these subjects in terms of the support they might be able to offer you with your application and things like that, but you, you're not required to. Um, so in terms of sitting the test, when booking opens, you. You can put your postcode in and find your nearest Pearson View test centre, which is the same kind of place you would go to sit your driving test. So hopefully somewhere nearby. So you don't need to tell your school or college, but there may be benefits in doing that. Thanks, Esther. I think this will be my final uh, couple of questions because uh, I see that we're running out of time. Uh, there's one person asking, is it possible to over practice? Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Um I would say you could you could burn yourself out, I think, doing anything, um, you know, and you don't want to. I mean, I know we've said we've got, you know, hundreds, a thousand questions. You know, I'm not sure how many there are for BMAT. They're grouped into uh, papers, uh, but you don't want to run out of resources. Uh, I think it'd be quite hard because there's this this there's so much you want to save, you know, some stuff to do in the run up close, close to the test. Um, yeah, you don't you don't want to you don't want to burn yourself out. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know whether it's possible to sort of over prepare other than just getting fatigued. And by the time you get to it, you're exhausted. I'm not sure. <laughs> Esther, what do you think? Yeah, exactly the same. I, th I think um, as with any revision, we sort of say start earlier and do, do little and often, you know, it, you can get absolutely bogged down in, in some of the subtests. So um, and you've got to balance it with everything else that's, that's going on in your life. So, um, I mean, that's one thing with the UCAT where we say, you know, think about when you do want to sit it, you have got some choice in, in that aspect. So, so plan around when you think you're going to have time to revise effectively. Um, yeah. Thanks both. I think we're running to the end of our time, um, but thank you for all of your questions. Uh, I'm surprised at the variety of questions that we've had. There's more things to think about than I'd actually um, previously thought about, so that's great. Um, I guess the thing to say here is do go to the UCAT and BMAT websites. Now, they may not be updated yet because we're still very early in, in the testing cycle, but their websites will be updated. Is there anything else, Esther and, and Rachel, you want to add before we go? Uh, just um just best of luck with everybody and yeah the, we we are accessible we're here to help so if you're struggling get in touch uh, with ourselves through social media or, or, th or through our website you know we are here to help and there's lots of sources of information to help you so don't panic yeah yeah i just want to wish everybody luck really yes do visit the websites uh you can you can follow um us on social media too um but yeah just um you know you've got absolutely loads of time it's 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 so early you know and these are these are testing things that you that you know and that you can do and it's just sort of practicing and time management so yeah good luck with it all